thank you for joining me in exploring another avenue on the path of the seeker. Today we're going to take a look at the first part of Joseph Campbell's hero's journey and how it relates to the path of the seeker. Joseph Campbell was a mythologist who became a mystic through studying myths. I think it's important to note that George Lucas called Joseph Campbell his Yoda at the National Arts Club in 1985. I don't know about you, but Star Wars had a huge impact on me as a child. There are five elements in this part. There is the call to adventure, refusal of the call, an encounter with a protective figure, crossing the threshold, and belly of the well. All right, so what does this mean to you exactly? How can this apply to your path? Well, let's explore each of these elements separately and see if they sound familiar. First, there is the call to adventure. This is different for every person. Sometimes it starts when we start experiencing synchronicities. For example, every time we look at the clock, it may say 1111. Maybe we experienced the Mandela effect, where we thought in the Bible it said the lion shall lay down with the lamb instead of the wolf. Maybe a loved one died and we're searching for answers about the afterlife. I've experienced the call many times in my life. We know that we have these experiences, but nothing can be proven. We start to realize that there's something going on, but we're not too sure about it. Next, there is a refusal to the call. At this point, we're not really convinced there is something happening. Maybe we looked up 1111 and awakening, but it all seems so different from what we know. You wonder what your friends will think and decide the path is not for you. In A Hero with a Thousand Faces, Campbell says, the subject loses the power of the significant affirmative action and becomes a victim to be saved. A lot of people get stuck here on the path. They live in the state of the victim, never choosing to be the hero of their own story. They want someone else to save them. They want someone else to lead them because they don't think they are capable of continuing on their own. The next element is the protective figure. There's an old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. You might be minding your own business when out of the blue, a friend gives you a DVD about synchronicity. Or in my case, at one point, my boss loaned me the book, The Secret. Maybe you stumble over this video. Campbell referred to this person as, they represent the benign protecting power of destiny. Next, we come to crossing the threshold. Well, now you are in an unknown place. You graduated from curiosity about the secret into learning about symbolism. Maybe you picked up some oracle cards. Maybe you read Zachariah Stitchin's theory about the alien Anunnaki creating humankind. Maybe you stumble over the concept that we are at the end of an age, whether it's called the Hindu Kali Yuga, the Hopi Age of the Animal, or the European Age of Pisces. Maybe you're into the concept of the awakening or manifestation. There's so much they never taught you in school. Yet we can get stuck at this point too. Learning all this, we can get sucked into dark conspiracy theories that can have a very negative influence. The fear can increase to the point where we don't continue. We feel as though our power has been taken from us. We just spin our wheels at this stage. Campbell had this to say about crossing the threshold. The usual person is more than content. He is even proud to remain within the indicated bounds. The adventure is a passage beyond the veil. For anyone with competence and courage, the danger fades. Finally, we're at the belly of the well. At this point, we realize we can never unsee the ideas that we have seen. We cannot go back to how things were before we started expanding our mind beyond the boundaries most people are conditioned by society to believe in. Suddenly, the formula of getting an education, getting married, buying a house, and having kids isn't going to satisfy us. Our perspective of the world has shifted, and it will never be the same. Campbell explains this stage as, The idea of the passage of the magical threshold is a transit into the sphere of rebirth, the interior of the temple. Here we are, now at the interior of the temple. Suddenly, we're starting to realize that life is more than the shallow experience we've been taught. We started to see and sense a rhyme and reason in the universe. We can just barely perceive something bigger than us, and maybe taking up a meditation practice would be a good idea. Here are some intriguing quotes about the temple. Buddhist stupa shrines are readily found all across India and Asia, and comparable structures take many variant forms in other widespread regions of the world. These forms begin with the simplest stone cairn and end with a great pyramid of Giza. A host of shared symbolic attributes argue that this class of aligned shrines includes such diverse types as a Mongolian yurt, Navajo roundhouse, Native American teepee, and even the traditional Jewish hupa. So pivotal is the symbolism of the stupa to the cosmological tradition. By strictest interpretation, the shrine is assigned the role of a purely symbolic structure. Laird Scranton, Point of Origin, 2015. Our bodies are the temples of the living God. The way to spiritual breakthrough is found in God's teachings from the Mount to Moses and the people. One of the first teachings was to build a new temple, a portable one, with an outer court, inner court, holy place, and a holy of holies. 
In this temple, God promised to meet them face to face. This temple represented what would eventually be understood as the human body and mind. The outer court, the physical body, the inner court, the spiritual man, is approached through the mental body, the holy place, and on to the holy of holies, where the father and mother may speak as though face to face. John Van Aken, Spiritual Breakthrough, 1992. When I see multiple cultures around the world have a similar tradition of a portable alliance shrine, I cannot deny that there has to be a purpose behind it. This is also how I feel about the concept of the end of the age that we are currently in. At some point, clearly all religions or spiritual teachings were the same. For me, I think John Van Aken adequately explains the ultimate meaning of these portable temples for each of us. When we first step onto the path, we are departing from the world as we have been conditioned to believe it. We are leaving behind the focus on the material world. We're opening our mind to the possibility of a spiritually connected world. Congratulations. You're one of the heroes who stepped onto the path. You've left behind victimhood in search of healing, wholeness, and truth. In the next video, things get really exciting. Part two is initiation. You don't need a guru or a teacher to initiate you personally. You just need spirit and a will to serve all human beings. If you depart on this journey with specific selfish intentions, you might end up getting exactly what you want, which is far less than what you deserve. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's adventure on the path. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and subscribe.